Welcome. Here we will introduce you to Python for data science. Data science is probably the hottest buzzword in the industry now. An article in the Harvard Review puts data science to be the most exciting and high paying job of our time. Data science is an art of turning data into actions. This is accomplished through creation of data products which provide actionable information without exposing the decision makers to the underlying data or analytics. For example, buy or sell strategy for financial instrument, a set of actions to improve product yield or steps to improve product marketing. As the Venn diagram here illustrates, data science lies at the intersection of three skills, hacking, mathematics and statistics and domain knowledge. Any one or two of these skill sets take you to another domain. For example, hacking skills along with mathematics and statistics take you into the domain of machine learning. Although machine learning is a key component of doing good data science, it does not take domain knowledge into account. Making this expertise will not only help you get better with machine learning, it also helps you make sense of complicated black box mathematical algorithms which otherwise does not make sense to an average user. On the other hand, a lot of mathematics combined with domain expertise makes up the traditional research. Data in the modern digital age comes in different formats, from raw text to images. Data can be structured, semi-structured or without any structure at all. Now, without the hacking skill, one will not be able to deal with such a type of data sets. So, what are the specific skill sets you need to have to be a competent data scientist? The first step in a typical data science pipeline is to have a specific business question. Once you have that, you need to identify and acquire data from multiple sources. This requires ingesting data from various sources and various formats of data. For example, if you run a retail store and would love to know about the impact of the weather on your sales, you need to ingest the transactional data from your company database and also look at external weather data source. This would require strong fundamentals of computer science, knowledge of database and some exposure to parsing web technologies or work with web APIs. Modern databases come in multiple flavors, for example, relational, distributed and things like that. You need to have working knowledge of most of them. The next step is exploratory data analysis. This is where your soft skill combined with your statistic knowledge comes into play. You need to be comfortable in the reshaping, aggregating data in various different ways to tease out possible relationships between different variables in the data. Communication of these preliminary results to your audience who in most cases will not be mathematically inclined is again very crucial. The fourth step is modeling out where you get to show off your skills in machine learning and predictive modeling. You need to be able to work with lots of variables and combine them to select the most appropriate algorithm. Finally, you need to be able to take these results and communicate your findings back to the business stakeholders. Now that you have an idea on what is the role of a data scientist, we take a look at the weapon of choice. For a lot of successful data scientists in the industry, the weapon is Python. Python was designed by Gudo van Rosum and first appeared in 1991. What started out as a hobby project has now become a widely used general purpose programming language. Python is extremely versatile and can be found in thousands of different applications worldwide. Python enables us to write clear and logical applications for small and uh, large tasks. Additionally, Python can be run on different kinds of computers with uh, few or absolutely no modification. It is very easy to build your own libraries in Python and share it with the community as well. Over the years, this has helped development of thousands of packages solving very specific problems for our specific industries, domains and things like that. As of today, you can use Python to build any kind of software, from web programming to scientific programming, from scientific programming to simulation, from simulation to hardware programming and from hardware programming even to 
video gaming. It's moved beyond being traditional programming language. It has become a technology platform with a thriving ecosystem of its own. Some of the biggest technical companies in the world use Python for their products. For example, many components of Google's core technology like the web crawler and the search engine is written in Python. YouTube has a significant amount of its implementation done in Python. The Dropbox desktop client is written entirely in Python. In addition to their desktop client, the Dropbox server-side code is pretty much written in the language as well, making this the majority language used in the company. Additionally, it is open source, implying that you are free to download it, modify it, design applications using it all for. The popularity index as the one that we see puts Python next to Java, though it is a distant second the gap continues to reduce. This course is not a full-fledged course on Python. Our main focus will be doing data science in Python. As we will see later, there are a lot of different libraries available in Python which makes doing data science a lot more fun. Python has a very extensive framework and libraries for performing various different tasks in data science. Some selected libraries that help to achieve so our problems are NumPy, Pandas, SciPy and Matplot libraries. Remember that Python is a general purpose programming language. There are many different libraries to solve problems for many different disciplines. In addition to these, some prepackaged distributions of Python are also widely available. One such distribution is the Anaconda and that's in particular very useful. We will be working with Anaconda distribution for most of this course, but what we would say, you are free to experiment with other distributions of a course if you wish. Browse the link that is being provided here to download Anaconda for your platform. Choosing the right set of tools is essential for the beginner. These should be intuitive and relatively simple to use. Based on our experience in learning and teaching data science, we have a few recommendations regarding the tool set for someone getting started with data science. As noted earlier, the Anaconda distributions makes life really simple to use. Most of the important libraries used in data science come pre-installed with this distribution. Currently, there are two major versions of Python 2 and Python 3. Although they are almost similar, there are some notable differences between these two versions. Python 2 has been around for a long time and uh, as the version number suggests, Python 3 is more recent. The first version of Python 2 was released in 2000 and uh, after more than a decade in the market, it has received many new features, major upgrades and bug fixes. The current Python 2 version is actually 2.7 and Python 3 was introduced in 2.0.0.8. The most stable Linux operating system runs on Python 2. Any installation of Python 3 that overrides the default Python 2 options mostly breaks the operating system. Those of you who are in Linux systems, we would suggest you should be especially careful with that. Windows is pretty much less affected by that. Python 2 has a little bit better support and strong community involvement. To get started, we think Python 2 is a great choice. As you gain more experience, you can upgrade to Python 3. Apart from the basic functionalities available in Python, which is very extensive, NumPy is a library which is worth exploring. NumPy is extremely useful for fast numerical computations. For example, vector and matrix operations, linear algebra and things like that. Panda is another library that implements spreadsheet-like data frames in Python, which is otherwise unavailable. The arrival of Panda has in many ways revolutionized the way developers work in uh, quantitative fields. The third library we think should be part of the workflow is the Matplot library. This is the primary visualization library in Python. Although Matplotlib has many alternatives which produce fancier, more professional looking visualization, it is a great toolkit to get started with plotting in Python. The final library in our recommendation for this course would be Scikit-learn. 
this is a workforce to implement machine learning algorithms and other methodologies related to it in terms of complexity to use scikit-learn is probably the most complicated in our list it is on this list because in terms of functionality it is miles ahead of its competitors if you aspire to be a data scientist you need to be able to do machine learning scikit-learn is the best tool by a mile to do machine learning regarding the installation browse to the download section and follow the instructions for your specific operating system select if it's a 32 or a 64 bit and just remember to use python 2